Hello, class. Are you ready? Hello. Are you ready for your lab exercise? Oh, yeah. Yes, perfect. So let me have my list in front of me. Last time in class, we started with a, a, a few steps that we need to um, perform to create uh, the three numbers that we need. The first number is the value of your idea or the cumulative NPV. The second is the return on investment. And then we have payback period or a break even point. Um, I did a few steps with you last time. I'm going to repeat doing those. Uh, I don't know if somebody was absent in this class, but maybe some of you missed uh, a small detail here or there. So this is the worksheet. Make sure the file that you open uh, from lab two, you go to the tab that says lab two spring 2001 section three and that is your section the numbers will look like this these are the calculations we did last time so i'm going to go ahead and delete them and uh here i am with and this is something maybe here i am with a worksheet uh, and we're going to do the cost benefit analysis the inputs for our calculations are discount rate, the rate at which money loses value over time. Uh, we have the value of the benefits over the years. So this is your prediction, what will happen during the uh, years uh, in which your project is uh, being used or deployed. Now you have development cost. In this specific example, you're assuming that development ends in the current year. So only um, uh, year zero shows the value and that's a negative value for development cost. Then we have your ongoing or operational cost. And that's gonna be the uh, cost you're paying for your networking infrastructures or for your license agreements or for hosting services. Um, or help desk uh, technicians to uh, address some of the uh, user reported bugs. All of those will go into a number, we call it uh, operating, operational or ongoing cost. So three sets of numbers and a discount rate. The first thing we did together was to calculate this discount factor. And then discount factor has two, uh, uh, two components. First is the discount rate. Second is the number of years in the future. Because as you go into the future, uh, that discount is compounded. So this is the formula we talked about last time. One over one plus your discount rate I selected with my mouse to the power of the number of years. I enter that, I wanna apply this formula to the cells on the right, but I wanna make sure this value stays constant. So as I move to the right, I use this value again and again, but then the number of years will change. So I'm gonna press F4. If you don't know the shortcut, just put the dollar signs before and after the letter. I enter and apply the formula to the uh, rest of the cells. So if you say uh, stay on this one, you see that it's still one over one plus B1. So that part is stayed constant, but here we're using C3 instead of B3 because we're using that uh, number of years for this specific one. This shows that your money is losing value. A, a dollar earned or spent in year two, for instance, is worth only 83 cents today based on your discount rate of 0.1. Uh, 
We're going to, I'm going to delete this one too. Why did I have that? Oh, no, no, I, I need that. So I'm going to skip row eight and I'm going to do row nine that we did together last time. Row nine is the net value. You put all the benefits and costs together. You do the sum and you get that, that value. I put equal sign sum. Then I, um, I select those three values that I need. So these are my three values. I'm going to select it with my mouse left clicking and enter. I'm gonna apply the formula to the cells on the right. This is going to do um, the net for us. What do I have after all spendings, all earnings? And these are the numbers for each year. But those are the money you have on those years. They, you have to get their today's value. How do you get that? We call this value net present value. So make sure you know that in PV, whenever they tell you net present value of anything, it means that it's the value for that year multiplied by the discount factor. Discount factor, we have already calculated. So we're gonna put equal sign, get the value selected, multiple by discount factor. It's the same for year zero because the discount factor is one. The numbers will show a difference as the year goes on and the differences become larger as you move on to the future. Cumulative value considers, cumulative MPV considers what you have done up to and including this year. So this MPV for year, zero, NPV for year one, NPV for year two, NPV for year three. Now, but there, if you wanted to, to know where you stand on um, in terms of finances, you have to consider what you started with. So year zero starts with nothing. So it's the value of cumulative is equals to the value itself. Let me just make it a tiny smaller. But from there, when you're in year one, you have minus $70 million you start with and you earn, or you have the net value of uh, the one above you, which is C10. So that's how much you make during that year. So I have this value plus this value. This, this is how much I had in year one, but I should consider that I started year one with a negative value. And so that's the result. I'm still negative, even if I have some positive money left for me um, during that year as a result of my operation. So from there, uh, I can drag the formula year one, two, and three share the same formula. Year zero is an exception. Why? Because there is nothing before it. And you see that somewhere in year three, I uh, hit the zero, like I go from negative to positive. So somewhere there, I start to become um, profitable. Now, this value, we highlighted this one. This is the value of your idea. If you wanted to go to the shark tank, you presented your idea based on the projections of the benefits and the cost. This is the number you give the sharks. And then you have to back it up. This is, uh, you have to justify that how you put the value of benefits $40 million per year on and so on based on the sales you have right now or the agreements with the big companies to sell your product. So we're gonna keep that first number. This is up to the place um, we were last time. So today I'm gonna to start with payback period. So for payback period, I'm gonna stay on this row, cumulative NPV, and I'm gonna scan it. I'm sorry, can I ask a question? Yep. Um, I have a couple of errors in mind and I don't understand what's going on. Can I share my screen and show you? Go ahead. Oh, 
What's there? Just uh, widen B, widen B. That's just widen yourself. You'll get the, let me control. Give me control. Then the zero for the 50 was actually an O in a value and benefits. Oh, so yeah. 5D. Yeah, this is the class with the five zero. This is five zero. I think I gave you five uh, O. So we talked about that last time. Now you have everything that you should. This was a wrong number I had put in that cell. Is that okay now? Uh, yes, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, everybody has these numbers. And uh, if you were not here last time, just note that this 50 was, um, was written wrongly. So that was the problem Ryan had. And maybe some of you also changed that to five zero instead of five zero. Um, so I'm gonna scan uh, row 11 to see when the, was it that I hit, um, I hit zero and be, moved from negative territory to positive territory. So I, I started year three. So year two ended with minus 5.1. And so if you are also, you were not here last time, right click format cells. And this is how I have chosen to see negative numbers. Um, if you haven't chosen that, you see negative numbers just with a minus. Uh, on the left. So don't get confused with the formatting choices I have made. So I end year two with minus $5.1 million. I start year three with that number. Yes, that's cumulative MPV. It's saying that at the end of that year, considering everything you have done up to and including that year, this is how much you have. And that's saying that I'm starting year three with minus 5.1. Then I end it at plus 28 something, 28.7, okay? So the payback period happens three years and some days, how many days? Let me switch quickly to my whiteboard. So I start year three, this is year three. starts, uh, or maybe I should uh, do I show year three, day zero. Yeah, that's okay. I can just show it with um, horizontal line. And year three, day 365. So I start year zero here. Imagine this is 365, yes, going from zero to 365. I start here, minus 5.1, and then I end it up there, plus 28, and the proportions are not really good. Maybe I should draw it again. Let me, draw the horizontal line a little bit lower. So here is my year, 365. This is day zero, minus 5.1. That's day zero. And then I finish the year. Let me just, I finish the year. So year three, three day 365. I finished it at plus 28. That's a little bit better in terms of proportions. So when was it, if, and this is the zero, this is the line zero, this is negative territory, I owe money, this is I have profit, I can pay employees. Do you think it was closer to the beginning of the year or to the end of the year that I hit a zero? It would be closer to the beginning because it's the difference between five and 28. 
Exactly. So it's if you look at this value and this bigger value, and then you make the line, it was closer to the beginning of the year. Perfect. How many days? That's the question. This is what I'm going to say. I went from minus 5.1 to 28 plus 7. Oh, that's the whole earning. That's going to be the whole NPV for year zero. Year three, NPV year three. That's how much the net present value was for year three. And let's just do the calculation and 33 and 33.8. So I I made this much money during 365 days. Yes, the question is how many days did it take me to make this much money? That's 5.1 so that I can get from minus 5.1 to zero. So how much did it take me to make 5.1? The question mark, the number of days is these two multiplied together 365 divided by 33.8. And we're going to calculate that on your Excel sheet, but let me guess how much would that be? So this is almost five times so six. Maybe around 50, around 40 days, I guess, 40, 44. So then this is the time you hit zero. See, this is your zero. You go from negative territory to positive territory. This is the zero line. Let's put this logic on Excel. This is how I put it. I say 365 days. I'm going to, in 365 days, I made this much money. So I'm going to put the equal sign and this is the money I made. Yes, that's NPV for year three. I want to know how many days did it take me to make this much money? This much money and I'm going to get the negative value because I have to make that much money to hit zero. How many days? I'm going to put the same formula. So the days would be the same formula I showed in my whiteboard. The formula will be 365 times 33.1 times 5.1 divided by 33.8. That's 55. Why? Well, so 44. Hmm. Why did I do 5, 6? Is this the right number? So yeah, almost 50, but it should be less than. Oh no, we have 365. I counted the year as 300 days. About 55 days, or you could say 56 days, if you want to round up. This is how many days it took for your project to um, get to a point that you can pay yourself pay your employees and be profitable. So 365 days took you to make this much money. That's the NPV for year three. And that's the first year you became positive. If you became positive in year two, you have to use numbers for year two. And then how, how much is the money I need to make to hit zero? This is this much because I am at minus 5.1 when I start year three, I have to get it to zero. That's how much money I need to make. And the proportion says that you need about 56 days. That's your break even point. Your return on investment. Let me put the description of return on investment in general. So all the money left, oh, don't put the equal sign. So all, money left divided by all present value of all expenses. So all the money 
that is left, which is this value, divided by present value of all the costs. So let's do a quick um, sum of development costs. So we get that out of the way. Obviously the sum is equal to itself. Let's do the present value of operating cost, the row that we skipped before, and that's row number eight. I'm gonna get present value, get the value itself, pick B7 times discount factor. Enter, drag it to the right. This is the present value of the cost. Uh, I'm, excuse me. It was yeah. B7 plus which, which cell? Yeah. B7 times the discount factor. It's B4 for me. If it's the same for you, it should mm -hmm. be B4. OK, thank you. You're welcome. Let's do a sum of operating cost. That's the sum, 20 something million dollars. I'm gonna use that sum, put it here. So I'm gonna get what is left. This is what I have, what the money that's left at the end of year three. I'm gonna divide it by the sum of the two numbers that I just calculated. But this is return on investment. I look at the money spent. I don't need the negative signs here. So I do absolute value of this number, one of the costs, plus this number. I'm gonna enter, I'm gonna right click, format cell, percentage, one decimal point, that's my return on investment. Uh, I'm sorry, Professor, can you repeat that again? Yes, I'm gonna repeat doing return on investment. So this is the money, cumulative NPV on year three, that's the money I have left. So equal sign, pick that cell, select that cell, divided by absolute value, because I don't need the negative numbers. So you could do ABS, or if you're, you can just put the minus sign. I like ABS because it's more professional. ABS absolute value of the cost. This is one cost. This is the other one. This gets rid of the negative signs, which you don't need for calculation of ROI because you know that's the money spent. Then you do division, you don't need that. Then you do subtraction and addition, you need the negative sign. So that's the value, right click, format cells, Percentage, percentage, and one decimal point. And then you have all three numbers. Now I can just stay here for a few more seconds, ask you to ask me to repeat any step if you want me to, or I'll be ready to look at your work and help you troubleshoot. Can you go over the formula for F15? F15. F15, this one? Do you have yes. the numbers? Do you have the four numbers in the this four? Do you have this box set up? Yes. Okay, the value is, I select 365 times that smaller number divided by this one. So it goes diagonal divided by one corner to get the answer for the other corner. Do you have it now? Yes, thank you. Welcome. So take a look at these numbers. You're gonna get some hot water and then I'll be ready to look at your numbers.
Anybody else wants me to repeat any of the steps? Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat the uh, one for D16 again? Yes. D16 goes like this. You're gonna pick NPV at the end of project life cycle, cumulative NPV. That's the money that you have at the end, considering all expenses and all the earnings. So equal sign, select cumulative NPV for year three. Divided by absolute value, ABS, parentheses of these two numbers added. Total of development cost, I select that. F6 plus total of present value of operating cost. That's in F8. Do you have it now? Uh, yeah, except mine's not in percentage form. Right click, format cells, pick percentage, one decimal point is my choice. You can make your own choice. Um, how did you get F8? F8 is a sum. Let me do that again. Sum, equal sign sum of all these numbers, select the whole row. Does that work now? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Um, for me, uh, the, uh, the items in the row PV of operating cost aren't the same as yours. Can you show me the formula there? Uh, are you on the same worksheet? Do you have this, this number 0.1? Yes. So PV of operating cost, I'm going to do that again. Equal sign, operating cost times discount factor. Do you have the same formula? Oh, I gotcha. I was multiplying it by the discount rate. That's my bad. Thank you. It's OK. All right, good question. Anything else? Uh, hello, Professor. I got two euros on my on my sheet. Two what? Errors. Errors. I'll look at it. Okay. Uh, I share my screen. Okay. Let me see. Oh, let's show me the formula. So you haven't calculated those sums. You haven't calculated F6 or F8. Let me show you. Okay. Oh, so I just That's drag it out? No, no, you're not dragging it out. Okay. Go ahead and stay on F15 for me to see what's the problem there. What G3. G3. No, those are not the right numbers. So you pick the, that's not how you do it. You have to pick the right cells. 365, no, no, just delete the whole thing. I don't want you to hard code anything, okay? Watch me. Okay. Watch me again, you have hard coded some. So you just put equal sign, pick 365, don't hard code it. Oh, okay, okay. Pick it, multiply. Mm -hmm. By this number, that number on the corner, diagonal. Okay. Divided by the number on the other corner. Okay, okay. That should work. Now, do you have two missing numbers? These two are missing from your worksheet. This one is sum, follow me. Sum, select the whole row. Okay. Sum, select. The other one is also a sum. Selecting the whole row. Work on those and I'll look at your worksheet again. Who is ready to show me the work completed? I can show you. I can show you next. Go ahead. Who shared and unshared? Who was that? 
Ryan, go ahead, stay on column D and start with D7 for me. D7, show me D7. Go down. One more. One more. Uh, one more. Yeah, stay on your return on investment. Uh, D16. Stay on uh, F for F15. Show me. Show me uh, B9. B9. And then go to the right. C9. Then go to the right. Uh, D9. So the formula changed. You didn't drag the formula there. What happened? You choose two different formulas there. Drag the formula from B9 to the rest of the cells. Yes, drag the same formula. Okay. Go to a C10. All right, good, thank you. I can go next. If. Go. If you're some of those who always goes last, try to go earlier today, okay? Those of you who always hesitate to share their work. Who was next? Go. Could I go whoever, after whoever, whoever already called it? Yeah, I, I, I don't know how to share it. Okay. Um, oh, there it is. There is a big share button when you hover over the. Okay, stay on B7 and go one cell at a time. Show me what you have there. Uh, in seven or B? No, stay on B, go down. Mm hmm. Yep, go one more, one more. Go to the right. Show me B F15. Perfect. Good. Next. Uh, I can go, I guess. Yes, you can. Uh, I thought I was going to go. Oh, it was you, Terrence. You're right. Go. So go ahead and stay on D8 and go down. I want to see the formulas you have. D, D as dog. Oh, sorry. Go down. Down. Um, F15. E16. Uh, E16? Or is that B? Yeah, D16. Good. Show me discount factor D4. Good. Done. And can we leave once we finish? Just cross over? Yes, you can. Awesome. I can go after Eddie. Eddie, yeah, was it you? I think Eddie was asking to go next. Yep. Go ahead, stay on E and show me the cells from E8 to E11. Oh, oh, just control Z, whatever you did. Yeah, do that again. Yep, next one. Oh, no. Try, ju try just to do. You can use the arrow key with that. Uh, scroll down. Show me 
G fifteen and I think go to ROI. I want to see the formula for ROI. Perfect. Stay on C four. Show me the formula for C four. Perfect. Good. Thank you. So in case you're wondering, class, I had students in the past who copied the number from the screen. So they didn't do the work. So I have to double check, make sure everybody has followed the steps. Um, so we submit this on the webs on ReggieNet, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you said we're good to go after we show everything? Yep. Okay. Who's uh, next? Show? Or are you up, Jonathan? Uh, I, I mean, I called. Oh, yeah, you go. You go. I didn't hear but, you. My bad. Okay. All right. Uh, let's hope I get it right this time. Let's see. Um, Excel share. Um, are you getting my Excel sheet? Yes, I see that. Is that Jonathan? Yes. Show me. Uh, start with D, H, and move one cell at a time down. Yes, go down. Yes. Yes. Yep. Show me the formula for F15. Good. Thank you. You're good, Jonathan. Good job. Thanks. I'm going to see some of you are writing in the chat. I don't necessarily check that. We're so just making a line of who's going to go after him. Okay, then respect that. Oh, there, is, there is not a lot of way I can enforce that. So just do it as you see there. Who is next? Okay. Show me the formula for B. All right, C4. C4. Okay, go. Nice background. Have you been to that place? Where is it? The snowy mountain. Is it Park City? Go down from D8, D8, uh oh, yeah, D8. Use the arrow key. Sometimes it's easier to use the keyboard so you avoid double clicking on the cells. Go one cell down, D9, D10, D11. And show me D16. D16. Good. Um, yeah, Professor, I have been there. That is Park City, Utah. Really? That's, uh, I'm pretty sure that's Brighton Mountain. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I was there many years ago, not recently. Nice place for skiing. Or the yeah, it's very beautiful. All right, thank you, Professor. Have a great day. Thanks, you too. Okay, who is on? Who is after Robert? Is it Caitlin? Good, you have a line. I like that idea. So, stay on. E4. E4. Stay on E8. E8. E9. E10. E11. F15. Good job, Caitlin. You're done. Thank you. You're welcome. Who's next? Uh, can you see it? Greg, I can see it. Show me D8. Why is the why is the number written? Why is there uh, no, there is no formula? Oh, I'm I'm um, that's the formula for this. I tell us to ask. 
I just messed it for a, I have everything else for. Sure. So go back to cell B8. Okay. Equal sign, put equal sign. Equal. Okay. Equal sign, select B7, which is the operating cost, B7. Okay. Multiply by B4. Enter. You stay on the bottom right until you see the plus sign. Yes, now do. Okay. Good job. Go stay on D9. Okay. E10. Perfect. E11, go up, show me D4, nice. Scroll down, show me your return on investment. Uh, that number should be positive. Uh, which, this one? No, the one on the corner. So the minus five, double click on minus five, put minus D11 instead of D11, put minus D11. Okay. Stay on return on investment. Go on return on investment. Okay, uh, this? That's payback period, return on investment is there. D16. Okay. That's it. Good. You're done. Thanks. You're welcome. Cole, is that you? Who is this? I don't see a name. What I imagine? Oh, uh, this is Dylan. Dylan. Uh, go show me E4. Show me E8. E9, E10, E11. And show me your return on investment. Good. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. So who is next? Uh, me. Go ahead. Okay. Show me C4. C4. C8. C9. 10, 11, show me your return on investment formula. This one? No, return on investment. Or this one? Yes, good, done. Next. Ah, uh, that's me. Go. Is it, uh, is it Sharon? It's coming up. Okay, so show me E4. E4. That's five. E4. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. E8. E9. 10. 11. And show me the formula for F15. Nice. Done. What's next?
Okay, this is. Uh, you hear me? Uh, what do you mean? Yes, C4. Um, C9. D8. D11. B11. D as dog. Show me C16. Done. Thank you. Next. Show me D4. Show me T D eight D E nine ten E nine E ten Show me B ten. Sorry. Go to the right. C ten. Okay. And show me F fifteen. F fifteen. Oh, sorry. Okay. Good. Thank you. Was this just? This is justice. Who's going next? Uh, go ahead. D4. And It's doing that. There we go. <laughs> this is Virgil. Show me uh, D eight, nine, ten, and eleven. All right. F fifteen. Good. I was Virgil. Good done. What's next? Show me B B uh, four. And show me E. Eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Show me D seventeen. Great. Done. What's next? Um, I am. Um... Show me uh, E4 and E8, 9, and 11. Just go down one at a time. Yep. Show me F15. Good, done. What's next? Uh, that'd be me. Go. Uh, can you see it? Yes. Okay. Show me D4. And then D9, 10, 11. 
D8 as well. That's good. That's it? Yep. Okay. Who's next? Jacob, show me Steve oh. or... Sorry, <laughs> I was muted. Uh, what do you want? C4? C yes. And C9, C8, 9. Go down one more, one more. Show me D16. Good, thank you, Jacob. Have a good one. You too. What's next? Show me uh, D4. D4, then D8, 9, 10, and 11. Okay, D4 you say? Yes. All right. D8, 9, 10, and 11. Do um, C, 16. Good, done. Was it that Queenland? Yes. Next. Stay on C4 for me. Then show, oh, okay. So you didn't do that part. Were you missing class last time or no? Uh, I did, yeah. You missed class? Yes. So give me control. Do I? So this is a work around that we didn't want you to do, that you put all the numbers here. So basically trying to use uh, the same number over and over again, instead of doing that, you could just select this formula, select this one, press the four, that makes that part of the formula constant. So you don't need this, instead, you need to make that part of the formula constant and drag it to the right. So these are some of the things we want you to try as you have part Part of the formula changes, B3 changes, becomes C3, D3, E3 for the upcoming years, but B1 stays the same. So let me just look at some of the other numbers. Make sure you name it lab two underscore cool C. Okay. okay. All right. Next. Who's next? Can you see the uh, screen? Yep. Okay. B4. You said B4? D as in dog. Uh, okay. Right there. They show D, 8, 9, 10, and 11. There's Let's 8, go one. there's 9, and there's 10. 11. There's 11. And show F or F15. Uh, right there. Good, done. All right, I can submit it. Yep, you can. Perfect. Next. Have a good one. You too. Hi. Okay, Zach. Is John going next? Okay, my bad. Uh, you said you were going to. One of you goes. It seems Mason should go. Would you like to see? C4. C8, 9, 10, and 11. D sixteen. 
good. And we have. Hi, doctor. Have a good day. Thanks. You too. Show me B4. B4. Uh, can you not see it? No, just to stay on the cell. Oh, okay. Are you staying? Am I seeing before? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, and D uh, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Uh -huh. Show me nice uh, organization here. Show me F. 15. Oh, you're the one who is taking the numbering classes. Yes, accounting classes. Yeah, it's all accounting stuff this semester. So I'm just trying to get used to always doing that. Sure. Nice. Good job. Done. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Take care. You too. Thank you. Bye.